welcome to our lesson today we are going to see about the ethical and the security issues of computer system this is the first chapter of our lesson this is all about ethical and the security issues what are the major security issues of a computer system as you know the security issues of computer system are the major problem of our today so in order to take a necessary measurement or in order to overcome the problems of security issues especially that are related with such as hacking or cyber attack and another thing is we have to understand what ethical and the security issues is all about so in this chapter we are going to see in detail what ethical and the security issues all about stay tuned So, the learning objective of this chapter is there are some learning objectives. The first one is, for example, in order to describe ethical issues involved in information, you have to understand what are ethical issues involved in information systems. Society discuss the right to privacy and the freedom of information, explains the need and the mechanism to protect hardware and the software, and major the threat of virus and identify ways of preventing them so <coughs> this lesson the major lessons of this chapter is this one in order to understand the these objectives okay let me go to the point this as introduction the use of information technology presents major security challenges poses security serious ethical questions and affect the society in significant way so information technology raises ethical issues in areas of crimes privacy individuality employment health and working conditions so this implies that information technology has some beneficial results however in this today's world the problem of information technology is not less so this the main points of this chapter is how we can increase the benefit of information technology and one major issue in this chapter is principle of technology ethics there are some principles that have to be followed in technology those principles are generally around the major one are around four let me see them one by one so here the proportionality is the first ethics of information technology or technology ethics proportionality means the good achieved by technology must overweight the bad achieved by technology or the risk or the harm that technology can bring this is called proportionality another principle of technology ethics is informed consent informed consent means all individuals or all stakeholders of information technology those that can be affected by information technology have to be informed or they should understand and accept the risks they do not have to be forced another the third principle of technology ethics is justice justice means benefits and burdens of technology should be distributed fairly it means there there should not be one party that takes the benefits and the another party only take the burdens it means the burdens and the benefits of information technology should be equally distributed the another force the last principle of technology ethics is minimize the risks minimize the risk even if judged acceptable by the other three guidelines the technology must try to minimize the risks of information technology or avoid all unnecessary risks these are the major principle of technology or information technology these four principles can serve as a basic ethical requirement that companies should meet to help ensure the ethical implementation of information technologies and information system in a businesses but what are more specific guidelines these four principles are the major guideline okay they are the major one but there is also specific principles that have to be followed those are for example there is a code of information system or information technology professionals code of conduct or professional conduct which called association of information technology professional or 
are AITP. According to figure 6.2, we will see in the future, is a proportion of ethical principles that can serve as the basis for ethical conduct by managers, inducers, and information system professional. Business and information system professionals would live up to their ethical responsibility by voluntarily following such guidelines. For example, you can be responsible professional by one, acting with integrity, increasing your professional competence, setting high standard, accepting responsibility and accountability, advancing the health, privacy and security of general welfare of the public. You can increase your professional by doing this activity. Okay. Part of AITP standard of professional conduct is in recognition of my obligation to my employer, I shall. This means that the professionals have to follow the following guidelines. The first, they have to avoid the conflicts of interest and ensure that my employer is aware of any potential conflict. They have to protect the privacy and the confidentiality of all information interested, not misinterpret or withhold information that is germane to the situation. That can means that can be tra translated or misinterpreted based on the situation. Not attempt to use the resource of the employer for personal gain. As such standards or are the professional conducts as the obligation of the employer, okay? Or the employee, sorry, or as employee. And in recognition of for the society, use my skill and the knowledge inform the public in all areas of my expertise to the best of my ability, ensure the products of my work are used in socially responsible way, support, respect, and abide by the appropriate local, state, provincial, and federal laws. These are not the only conducts or the only professional ethics, okay? There are many ethics, but this one are the major one. And information privacy and the right in information society. Information privacy means that the right to <coughs> have uh, it means the right to have your information secured, to not exposed to anyone, okay? Information technology makes it technically and economically feasible to collect, store, integrate, interchange, retrieve data and information quickly and easily. This implies that your information or the, your privacy can be interchanged, retrieved or integrated or collected easily. By what it means? By usage of information technology. In modern life, the everyday use of digital technology creates numerous instances in which personal information, name, street address, phone number, social security number, as such things are correct, collected. Okay. Increasingly, consumers are unable to keep their secrets. This implies that the, those individuals or those companies that collect the privacy of other individuals have to keep the privacy of other persons in secret. So the question that is being asked in many circles is, can someone else use information given for a specific purpose? Can anyone individual use for information for the purpose that you do not intend to use? Or, for example, you provide details about your age, your date of birth, your social security, or another things. When you are recruited by an organization, can your employer, without your consent or without your permission, pass this information to a credit holder company by which you are going to get a lot of junk mail from credit company? This implies invasion of your privacy. So, if we see how your personal data or privacy can be exposed, now let me see what are the solution. The solution for privacy can be in different ways that can be through regulation or through technical measures or through individual action. There are three steps you have to take in order to protect your privacy. Those are regulation, technical measures, and individual action. Let me see them. Security uh, types of threats to computer system. What types of threats can be exist in a computer system? 
security concept is in computer system the first one is security concept is security in computer computerized the system involves protecting all parts of computer system okay so it is not all about the software of the system it can be the external parts hardware of the system this include data software and hardware computer system hardware software and data need protector from intentional as well as unintentional damage or the misuse some scenario of some scenarios of trees to computer system the system could be succumb to fires it means accidental or it can be deliberate or earthquakes or fluids dragging our equipment and making it possible for organization to function normally try to imagine consequence of the computer managing railway for example if it is succumb to fires if the railway reservation is burned you can imagine the consequence it can bring so there are different scenarios for example confidential data may become available to unauthorized persons today for example in india high performing it professional and finance professional are in great demand the salaries of the salaries that an organized pays to its employee are confidential so if this one is exposed to another person this can bring some privacy issues software may get stolen and used by computers You're, if you are for example a brewery factory owner or if you manage brewery factory if your software get stolen you may your companies may in, face some challenges or it may even difficult to survive so there are different scenarios okay now let me see what is a virus what is a virus virus is simply a computer virus is a self-replicating program they are a program okay which cannot exist without host it means they cannot live in <coughs> sorry they cannot live in in vacuum okay they have to have some hosts these programs have existed since 1960s starting from 1960s virus existed, but they did not known to be viruses okay they known only since 1984 to be called as a virus and the effect that come by virus is called payload 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 and can the payload can be harm can be very harmful or it can be uh, easy so there are over 15,000 virus have been identified more than 50,000 virus available and more than 200 of virus create every day okay every month sorry there are other types of program associated with virus and sometimes seem to be subset of virus those are called trojans and worms worms are self-replicating but they do not have the payload the viruses have worms have are self-replicating like a viruses but they do not have a payload worms use internet in order to transmit from one computer to another computer such as for example worms such as love letter and circa is an example trojans however they are do not self-replicate rather they only transmit like trojans horse of legend seem harmless but transport harmful information for hackers this means trojans facilitate for simply for uh, hackers okay so the question is how you are going to protect your computer from viruses if we identify different types of viruses how you are going to protect yourself from those viruses with the prevalence of virus today it is important for any computer accessing the internet to have protection against viruses so there are different means of protecting yourself from viruses here is some hints such as activities that you do not have to do those are the first one is never use storage media from untrustworthy sources you do not have to use storage from sources that you do not trust never download files from site or person that you do not trust never open email attachment from a person you do not trust never open email attachment that looks suspicious so if you do not have to do these activities and there is a do's okay activities that you have to do in order to protect yourself 
disable for example disable preview screen when using email scan storage media such as usb drives use real time virus scanners using real time virus scanner and download virus updates backup important files as such activities are activities that you do have to do in order to protect yourself from viruses okay so what are virus protection software there are different virus protection software in order to protect your surface from viruses for example here is some lists of antiviruses such as Symantec, mc mcv trained micro panda computer associates copper sky f secure and some one so you can use these softwares in order to protect yourself from viruses. And what is firewall? Firewall is a personal firewall software control that program are allowed to access the internet and prevents people from hacking into computer systems is known as firewalls. There are different types of firewalls such as zone lab, zone alarm or free, which is free and zone alarm, which is in proversion, Simon take, and another types of firewall are available so but the major usage of firewall is in order to protect your computer system from hackers okay in order to protect this is the description of that one disaster recovery plan organization and the business that really on computer need to institute disaster recovery plan that means they have to back up their data for example since flooding fire or other forms of accident or destruction can damage your computer hardware you have to protect your data in a backup form. role of backup there are different role of backup in order to protect your files and a loss of files means a loss of every can be a means of loss of everything so work all the work that has gone in not only is it a loss of me so it can be a loss of organization so role of backup is can be very very useful this is all about the explanation of that one another one is hazard so what is hazard hazard can be a fire excessive heat moisture fluids damaged by insects and the rodents and the as such things are known as hazards physical security is though all hazards cannot be prevent in, co in a cost effective manner can be taken in, or in order to protect yourself from hazards such as locate computer installation away from electric transformer ensure that computer system supporting mission critical application are housed in fireproof construction take regular backup as such things are physical securities okay install special fire extinguisher do not install water springer near costly computer. Do not allow employees to smoke near computer. A such activity can be physical security measures. As far as possible, avoid installing computer system on top of floor of building. Do not install computer near underwater tanks. Do not eat around the computer. Do not drink around the computer because that if you are drinking, that can be insert into your computer system or in your computer okay so this is all about security issues or regarding to ethical issues about computer system so thank you very much for being with us subscribe to our channel share to your friends thank you bye Hello friends, welcome back to our channel. As you know, our channel provides some educational points, especially regarding to management. So if you want to learn some points about management information system, researches, and some courses such as risk management, you have to stay tuned to our channel. So as you remember, last lesson we have seen about management information system especially regarding to the definition of management information system what management information system is and different definitions that are 
pointed out by different scholars so today we are going to see another portion of management information system especially regarding to foundational concepts in management information systems so stay tuned to our channels and please as much as possible do not forget to subscribe to our channel if you are a new for our channel like and share our channels so let me go to the point is enough so let me start to the point is our today's lesson is as i told you before it is all about foundational concepts in management information system <coughs> that means what point is are available in a management information system what are the core point is in management information system so in this chapter you have to the main objective of this chapter is in order to enable you in order to understand what data is for example there are some points you have to understand at the end of these lessons so you have you are expected to understand the following points at least the following points those are what the data is this means that you have to able to understand at least what the data is what information is what knowledge is what knowledge is in addition you have to explain organizational informational needs in the sources why organization need informations and you have to also explain the characteristic and importance of system concepts and e-businesses or electronic businesses what electronic business is explain the framework for understanding management information systems so now let me go to the point is foundational concepts in management information system what are the foundational concepts so introduction management has been defined in variety of ways but for our purpose it, it comprises the process and the activities that describe what managers do this means that in order to start from the bottom let me define what management is management is defined from different perspective however the main definition can be depend upon what managers do managers do five things there are five main activities that are done by managers those are planning organizing initiating controlling operations so because decision making is such a fundamental prerequisite to each of the foregoing process the role of mis or the role of management information system become facilitating decision necessary for planning organizing and controlling this is obvious one so from this point of view information serve for the purpose of decision making okay or reducing uncertainty in a decision making this is for simply an introductory purpose so let me see now a business and management functions business areas managers are found in various business areas in the firms as you know from the bottom of the firms up to the up level the managers available so the three traditional business areas are marketing manufacturing and finance in organizations any organizations especially if they are manufacturing firms these three traditional business areas are available those are marketing manufacturing and the finance and the another areas such as human resources and information services are also available <clears throat> so what managers do what are the main works of managers what are the day-to-day -day activity of managers there are as I said before, there are five major functions of managers. Those are planning, organizing, staffing, directing, and controlling. Planning means simply putting the organizational goals or plans. And organizing is an activity of organizing those activities. And staffing, directing, and also another functions. So you can see this one as uh, the pie chart is those are for example uh, if the managers are strategic level or top level managers their main activities are focus is on planning and if they are control level as you can see their main focus is on organizing and operational level their main focus is 
on directing okay this is what their activities is so now let me back to our main points our main point is, as you can see our main point is, is in order to define what data information and the knowledge is or the foundational concept is in management formation system is what we talked before is all about some introductory part okay what management is what are the main concepts and what are the main functions of management those all are the main for the introductory part so when we back to our pointers let me see what data what information what knowledge and what wisdom is okay so data is simply the collection of raw facts okay it is raw factors that can be about people about places or as you can see here about events and things that are important for organization the word raw or this raw facts this one is the main issue in data okay the main issue raw facts it, it is a raw facts about people places events and the things okay so data means simply the things you collected it is not a processed one but the things or an information that is simply collected okay and information however is simply a collected data that is further processed okay further processed data so data that has been processed that has been processed or reorganized as required is or in more meaningful form is called information information and knowledge is on another hand it is data and information that is further refined based on the factors truths beliefs judgment experience so if you use your information or the processed data for your own sake based on the available factors truths and beliefs it is known as knowledge knowledge and another definition is all about wisdom or good sense wisdom is simply using a knowledge based on our experience based on our exp expertise uh, or based on our judgment it means based on the knowledge we developed is known as wisdom so the main difference here is data and information is simply while rate data is a raw factors information is the process door and the knowledge is using data and information based on our fact based on facts and the truths and the knowledge is using of wisdom is using of knowledge based on our judgments and expertise so another one is the information makes a person more knowledgeable this one is obvious knowledge is an awareness and understanding of set of information that helps decision making so knowledge this implies that knowledge can help you to make a decision okay so another topic in this chapter is the information need of the information needs and the sources why we require information who need those information and what are the source of information okay so who are the information users the main user of information in organizations are managers and employees okay managers and employees are the main users of information so from the manager's point of view information serves the purpose of reducing uncertainty in any organizations in any factory in any work environment there is uncertainty if we are certain about things there is no reason we need information okay there is no factor that force us in order to seek for information uncertainty is the major factor okay so in order to reduce this uncertainty about the futures we have to seek information so this implies that the managers are the main users of information or the main persons or individuals in need for information so the idea of using the computer as a management information system was a breakthrough because it is recognized manager did for a problem solving information so let me see another individual that need management information system another one is non-managers non-managers and staff specialists also use MIS outputs 
another user is persons and organization in the firm's environment such as government such as individuals or stakeholders or shareholders those all individuals such as federal government for tax reporters and blah blah so if these individuals are or managers non-managers persons and organization in the firm's environment are the persons that require information what about the source of information what can be a source of information so an organization formation needs are made through gathering information from both internal and external environment okay the source of information can be generally defined into two those are internal and external when we say internal internal means simply information that are required from the transactions or activity of an organization while external external source of informations are mainly deals with information that are outside of the organization means outside of the control of the organizations so there are different sources okay there are different sources for external information such as publication publication can be central state or local and various publication of international bodies technical or trade journals books magazines blah blah so these all are external source of information okay external sources another main topic in this chapter or in this lesson is system view system view what is system what is subsystem what is super system okay <clears throat> so simply put a system is an organized collection of parts an organized collection of parts or subsystem is called system okay different parts that are combined together create a system create a system the system has various inputs which go through certain processes <coughs> to produce certain output which together accomplish the overall desired goal of the system For example, an organized an organization is made up of many administrative and management functions, products, services, groups, and individuals. So the collection of these all parties combined that are combined together they create system. Okay, system. So system do not have to be confused with a systematic. Okay, systematic means simply methodologically how things have to be done, while a system is a combination of what we discussed above. So system range from simple to complex. Some system are very complex while others are not as much complex. For example, biological system are such as hair test, mechanical system, such as ther thermostat, human mechanical system are more complex, okay? While another system are not as much complex. So this all is the explanation part so high functioning system continually exchange feedback among its virus parts high functioning system or if the system is the better or the efficient one it includes another part so a pile of sand is not a system a pile of sand it means simply if there is too much sand together this can't be a system because they do not exchange information together or for example if you remove one part of sand particle still you got another pile of sand it, mean, it means that if one part of the pile of sand is not functioning it does not affect the entire system in order to be a system it have to be at least affect that one okay at least so not all system have the same combination of elements for example However, this is the major <coughs> diagram of system. There is objective here. We have objective as the top. There is also input. Input have to be transformed to output, and there have to be internally a control mechanism. Control mechanism. So this all input that transformed to output, and the is controlled by some system and there have to be a general objective 
general objective okay so input resources are transformed into output then this in transformation have to be controlled by some elements okay some elements so the control mechanism is connected to the resource flow by means of feedback loop feedback loop means the while you transform input to output there have to be a control loop a control or feedback loop okay so another one is open and closed system what is open system what is closed system open system is a system that connect with its environment if the system is connected with its outside environment we call it open system and if it does not require some information from the external party it is called closed system such as for example laboratory system are closed system closed system another one is subsystem what is subsystem <coughs> subsystem is simply a system within a system if one system contain another system inside it is called subsystem and the reverse is true if some system contain another system for example we can say super system if some large system contain one system we can call it super system we will see in the future so here is also interface interface is where one system is connected with another system it is called boundary okay boundary and super system as i said before it is when a large system is a part of another system it is called interface interface so another one is physical and the conceptual system physical system is the business firm is physical system composed of physical resource and the conceptual system is that system does not in that is not available in reality that is not available in reality so what is the importance of system view what is the importance of system view a system view regards this business operation as a system embedded within a larger environment getting setting so it is an abstract way of thinking but it has a potential value to the manager this is importance of system view so the system view what is the importance the importance of system view the first one is in order to reduce complexity if you know this how the system functioning you can reduce the complexity required go, good objective emphasize working together acknowledge interconnection values feedback and extra so another one is a framework of for information system information system require a framework okay framework so you can see hierarchy of management for example hierarchy of management mainly goes from like a pyramid like a pyramid as you see it is a pyramid here this one implies a strategic level such as ceo okay management level or control level the median one is here and this operational level one is here for example in the operational level there are finance function human resource information service function manufacturing and marketing such as accounting and another department is available hierarchy of management so another one is management level a management level that we have seen here such as for example strategic planning level strategic planning level <coughs> main activities are deals with long-term objective okay long-term objective such as the decisions that require about strategic decisions for five years ten years or simply for at least less than five years okay as such decision are made by strategic or ceos or board of directors management control level they control the lower level of management okay the lower level of management and operational level the their main activity is to deal with day-to-day -day activity or lower level manager are persons responsible for it, carrying out the plans specified by managers on upper level or the medium the medium one so another one is influence of management level on information sources and forms when designing information system it is important to consider the manager's level it means that you do not have to 
give an information that are required by top managers or the strategic one to the lower one okay it means information given for the manager based on their level based on their level so managers on strategic level place greater emphasis on environmental information environmental information means simply what your competitors are doing or what another factory that provides the same products are doing rather than dealing with day-to-day -day issue okay rather than dealing with day-to-day -day issue so this is all about the level of management and their information needs this one is so now let me see what e-business is okay what is e-business what is electronic business is all about so e-business means simply using of internet and the web it means using internet and the web to perform business processes yeah you, you do not have to be confused with the term e-business with e-commerce okay e-commerce and e-business are different so e-business means simply using of internet and the web in order to conduct some business activities so here for example also the term e-business and e-commerce are used interchangeably e-commerce refers to selling online e-commerce is an activity of simply selling and buying online okay for example if you take amazon aliexpress or some another website their main activity is selling and buying however e-business go beyond that one it means such as doing your home your work being in your home as such activity is called e-business okay e-business is about using web te technology to enhance your business practices e-business is not any concept this <coughs> it is for example applied since 1950s or before that okay banks have been using electronic fund transfer to move money around the world for decades so as you see here around 1960s 1960s it can be applied since then so another topic is why we get into a business what are the main reasons in order to conduct e-business there are five major factors that force us in order to involve in e-business okay those are the first one is in order to extend your customer base if you use electronic business or if you use different web technologies and another meter in order to conduct e-business there is a likely that your customer base will be expanded so it means that if you use e-business you can reach a customer in different parts of the world so you can increase your customer base another reason is in order to respond to new customer and the competitive demands in order to respond to new customer and the competitive demands you can use e-business okay this means simply in order to attract this new customer okay another one is in order to enhance your productivity simply if you apply different techniques of e-business this can help you to be more productive by reducing the duplication, improving communication, and stimulating process. For example, when we say improving communication, improving communication, this means simply you can use the cheapest way in order to communicate with your employees in e-business. For example, you can use email, electronic mail, or another means of technology. Okay, so another reason is in order to lower your procurement and inventory cost if you use e-business you can reduce your procurement and inventory costs okay this means for example if you communicate with your supplier there is no need of containing or simply putting some inventories in your store no need so this can reduce your inventory costs the last one is in order to but in fact this one is not the least one okay this one is the last improve your customer service if you use e-business this one can also improve your customer service it means you can simply communicate with your services you can simply take their feedback and blah blah so this all is these five are the main reason in order to use e-business okay these are the major one not simply the least one okay
another topic of our today's lesson is all about web-based business model what a web-based business model there are <coughs> different models of that are depend on web for example the first one is email and the internet okay email so email means simply as you know it is electronic mail so you can easily get connect to the internet and set up an email address email can enhance your communication with partners with your customer with your suppliers and extra uh, another one is for example you can use email and or web based models for this function such as for marketing you can use you can promote your products using email you, you can use email in order to promote your products in order to communicate with your suppliers and extra such as keep partner and the business associate informed about projects and the meeting transfer documents for development review or revision exchange order form and invoice send permission based on email and extra another one is research and in, or intelligence gathering you can use web-based model in order to collect some data about the research okay such as compare supplier price and product specification access electronic database seek advice from supplier and extra the second one is website which website means consider creating a website so this website can help for different factors such as promoting your products or services sell products directly to your customer generate greater awareness of your business distribute business information and extra so an electronic commerce storefront for example you can use a website in order to make electronic commerces such as for example Barnes and the novel use this system in today's world different market use as such things okay so e-commerce we have seen e-commerce e e in initially uh, we we have seen about e-business now let me see what e-commerce is e-commerce e-commerce is simply using some website or electronic medias in order to sell and buy okay the main difference between two is e-commerce is all about selling and buying but e-business is applying for day-to-day -day activity so there are two forms of e-commerce business to business and the business to consumer okay so business to business is using of electronic commerce in order to conduct an activity between two business areas or more it can be more in fact another one is business to this one is wide in fact business to business opportunity online account for most e-business examples are for example for product catalog catalogs bill payment order tracking and online business to business marketplace that are focused on specific industries such as steel agriculture oil and extra useful across various industries such as tire cleaning and extra okay another types are business to consumer e-commerce okay business to consumer e-commerce business to consumer means simply when a business or a factory sell their products to the consumer directly okay so e-business has the potential to increase the scope and the profit of your business so used effectively you and your staff will be more productive if you use electronic means of selling and buying or applying in e-business okay so this is all about our today's lesson i hope you have enjoyed this topic so stay tuned to our channel so if you want to get a such kinds of lessons you have to subscribe to our channel so do not forget to subscribe to our channel do not forget to share it for your friends so you can drop your comments if you have some suggestions so have a nice time. Thank you.